Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a good day so far. So what am I working on today? See the Sierra behind me? That's my truck. Uh, it's not my personal truck. I actually purchased it to flip it. Um, needed quite a bit of work, and I knew that. Um, but that quite a bit of work turned into quite a bit more, more, more work. So I had to do the brakes on it. I did a full service on it, stuff like that. Um, needed a headliner, miscellaneous other stuff. So while I was doing that, uh, at one point, all of a sudden, I realized something was going on, and it started tapping. Uh, it started tapping because it lost oil pressure. So I was like, ah, crud. So it was still running fine, um, and it didn't have zero oil pressure. It just had very low oil pressure. So I was thinking, okay, it probably lost the O-ring on the oil pump pickup. That's a common issue. I had another 5.3 complete, and it ran fine. Um had actually a little bit this thing has 240,000 miles on it the motor that I had had 200,000 on it but it ran fine so I figured all right you know what instead of me fixing this I could swap motors out quick and easy so I did that no big deal all of a sudden I ran into a problem with the transfer case the dang, dang thing got stuck in auto four-wheel drive would not come out all right I went underneath I thought maybe the motor was no good I got another motor I took the old motor off and the selector shaft I could rotate it but it would jam it would also spring back into auto four-wheel drive so I'm like what the heck is going on here so I was messing with the mess I could not get the thing to come out of auto four-wheel drive it was staying in the same position all right like I said I, you could actually put a put a wrench on there and actually turn the shaft and I was hoping it would turn and like click over and into the next segment couldn't do it just wouldn't do it. It kept on springing back. Like Something's obviously wrong here. Let me get another transfer case. I didn't pay all that much attention to it, but I knew I had a fluid leak coming from somewhere, too, on the transfer case. I was going to clean it down and take a good look at it, see if I can't figure it out. But then I was like, you know what? I got this Suburban right behind me, which is junk. Uh, the body's pretty trashed on it. It doesn't look bad when you first look at it, but, you know, it, it's black. Uh, this thing's got a ton of mileage on it, too. But it's, it's junk. You can see the door is caved in there. The interior is trashed. Uh, but anyway, so coming over here, I pulled the transfer case out last night from my Sierra here. And I happen to notice, well, first off, there's a ton of goo on the top of it. But if you look right here, let me focus in on that. See that hole? What is that? Also... Coming around the side here, you see that? That's epoxy. Somebody cleaned this thing off and put epoxy on there. And if you come over here, that right there, that's another spot. There was epoxy there. I picked it off. There's a hole there also. So I don't know what happened if, before I bought this thing, did the transfer case blow up and somebody kind of just put it back together? And I, I don't know what happened. Somebody obviously epoxied it, but what? A, you never know what you're going to get. Luckily, you know, since I have this junkyard here that I work at, you know, I get to pick my parts when I need them, if we have them, obviously. And I get very good deals on them because this stuff that we have, a lot of stuff, like this transfer case, unless he sold it, this truck would have probably gotten crushed. So uh, I'm going to pull the transfer case out. I'm actually going to swap transfer cases because this Suburban still runs and drives. So... I figure instead of making it disabled, at least have it running and driving. I got the battery on charge now, so it was sitting so long the battery was dead. Um, but yeah, it'll run and drive. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to swap that transfer case from that into my truck. I'm going to have to stop at the parts store and get some gaskets because I don't know if you guys are aware of it. At the end here, where it bolts to the tranny, there's a gasket up in here. These are not terrible to pull out. I know some people would reuse the gasket. I'm not going to. I'm selling this truck, so I want to, you know, make sure it's right. Uh, let's see, what anything else? I don't think so. So let me get that Suburban up in the air, and let me get that transfer case out. Is there any, anything interesting I need to point to? I'm gonna, I'll show you. Uh, oh, one other thing too is on this, the uh, torsion bar mounts in the back are actually broken. It's a common problem on these, and I'm gonna have to replace those. Those right there. See how squashed down that is? 
you can actually see the gap on the top with a right there and this one on this side uh the, i believe the bushing let go like the sleeve inside so i'm gonna have to change these these are actually these brackets are riveted in place the new ones come with bolts so i'm gonna make a separate video and i'm gonna show you how to do that look at this this thing was sitting so long too look at a dirt dauber nest on there all right so let me get going on this let me get that transfer case out like i said if there, anything of interest comes along i'll point it out to you we're up in the air with the uh, Suburban. Let me just show you real quick. See that? The cats are missing. We are. We actually did that. We cut the cats out of it. Uh, only for... Uh, so we could scrap them. But anyway, here is the transfer case that I'm going to be taking out. This one actually looks pretty darn good. You know, it's relatively clean considering the mileage and everything else. So you got to get all of these nuts off here that hold the transfer case itself to the transmission. And here's the gasket in between. I'm going to have to change that uh let's see so yeah you got to take this cross member out you actually technically you don't have to take this cross member out but it makes your life a whole lot easier if you just take it out it's you know you got the the skid plate here you got these couple of little bolts and you have these gigantic four bolts that go through uh bolts and nuts so you got two nuts on this side because this is a flex fuel vehicle this is part of the flex fuel system so you got to take this off there's nuts on the other side of that and then you get the two Tranny mount bolts or nuts, whatever they have nuts on this. Uh, gotta get all that out, gotta get the front drive shaft out. And if you look, you can actually see that mark right there. What the heck is that? Oh, look, O2 sensor rubbing through. So that probably created running problems. But uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about shift linkage or anything like that. You just gotta worry about some wiring and brackets and stuff like that. Gotta take the rear drive shaft out, front drive shaft I'm gonna take out and just leave out. Uh, but yeah, so let's keep going. Like I said, really nothing spectacular. So let me get this out. Ran into my first big problem. Got the rear drive shaft out, no problem. Come to the front drive shaft, took the straps out for the universal joint, went to go break it free, and check this out. Let me get my pry bar in there, hold on. Do you see how the whole, see how the engine's moving? When I'm trying to pry this thing back, and it keeps springing back. Somebody at one point ripped the boot where the dry shaft is supposed to telescope inside the transfer case and they didn't fix it and it rusted. So now the dry shaft is seized into the transfer case. I could probably get it out once I get the transfer case out. What I'm gonna wind up having to do is take the transfer case out with the shaft. I'll probably leave it hanging in there and then hit this end with an air hammer to drive it out I got it soaking right now with some PB blaster. I'm gonna keep hitting it up. Uh, but anyway, I started taking the uh, cross member bolts out there. I got the nuts out for the mount. So I'm gonna drain the fluid that's in there and I'm gonna let this down. Letting this down too, as you see, you have some room here between the um, torsion bar cross member. So the thing will come down a little bit. This way you can get to the top nut. Top nut's a little bit of a pain to get to on the transfer case, but at least you can get to everything that way. So let me do that. Let me start getting that stuff drained and out of the way. Got the dry shaft out, as you see. I wound up using an air hammer with a long punch on it and hitting it there. That bit right there. And basically, I got it down enough and I got it slid out enough. I pushed it back in right now, but I had it slid out far enough to where I could get the universal joint to pass the cup here. The um, the yoke rather so this way once it passed that i pushed the transfer case back up in place so it was bottomed out on the tranny and basically from this end i just used the air hammer and hit it this way and brap and it came it came out it really it wasn't stuck in there severely but trying to just do it with a pry bar just couldn't do it so now basically the transfer case is ready to come out i'm going to uh it, it, once you oh that, that's one, one thing i forgot to tell you once you crack it free in here you can see there's a little bit of a drip right there but once you crack it free once you get all the nuts out and you start to separate it you're going to get a pouring of fluid coming out of there uh, so make sure you have a bucket or something underneath it uh, basically because you're getting a lot of fluid from the transmission that sits up in here and it'll just pour out you could get a good quart maybe two that comes out so if you can avoid getting it on the floor you know yay you so anyway now that that's done basically i the only connection i got left to do is the one for the um 
the four-wheel drive selector, the uh, actuator motor, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, or selector motor, whatever you want to call it. So I got to disconnect that harness, and then this thing's ready to come out. So, let me get it out. Got the transfer case completely in place now. Let me show you. <clears throat> this is it inside my truck now. I just cleaned it down a little bit. I filled it with fluid. It just takes Dextron three or higher. You know, four, five, six, whatever you got. I actually happen to have Dextron six laying around, so that's what I used. Uh, this one, luckily, doesn't have any holes in it. That's not a crack. It's just that's the way the uh, it had some dirt on it. So, uh, but yeah, dry shaft is in place. So now let me let it down and let me start it and make sure that the service four wheel drive soon light is off or not service four wheel drive soon, service four wheel drive light. Uh, make sure that's off. Let's see, battery's connected now. Let's hop in. I still have everything just hanging because originally I thought it was a switch that was no good because that's a common failure on these. So, and for the code it was setting, I thought it was just a switch. So let me see. Uh, yeah, now where the odometer would light up, it will come up and say service four wheel drive. Uh, change engine oil. Fuel level low, I know all about that. Alright, let's see what happens. Shut that off. Why is that? I might have codes in it. Let me look into that real quick. Right, so here we go. We got the scanner hooked up down on transfer case here. And let's just see. Display codes. Current codes. Transfer case lock circuit fault. What the heck does that even mean? <laughs> transfer case shift mode. I was researching that code, and basically it's talking about a lock circuit in the encoder motor, basically. It, it's very vague in the way it describes it. It keeps talking about checking the lock solenoid circuit. But meanwhile, there's really no lock solenoid other than the encoder motor. It doesn't specify any of that, so it kind of leads you in like a loop-de-loop. -loop. So, anyway, I started checking into it, and I started looking at wiring diagrams, and I saw... You know, okay, I found, you know, this wire on the encoder motor needs to have battery pot battery positive power uh, all the time or with the key on and blah 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 so I go underneath and I start checking because I want to just check my powers and grounds first and this is what I came across now when I'm under here oh, let me turn the light on so here's the connector here the main connector from the body and the second pin here this one right there it's the orange wire that's supposed to have power right now with the key on. Now, here's my power probe. Now, had it had power, when I probed it like this, it should light up something or even do this. Because I have it set uh, for audio, uh, to be audible. So now, I'm like, okay, I got no power there. So I went under the hood. Obviously, I checked the fuses. I did that first, actually. I checked where the fuses were, and I checked where the fuse was coming out. I wanted to check to make sure that I actually had power coming out. First connector I got to, I checked there, I had power coming out of the connector. Okay. So now what? So I go over here, alright, I got nothing. So I probably have a broken wire somewhere. So I start looking through the wiring harness, and I find... And look right here. What do I see right there? How I overlooked that, I have no idea. But I'm going to be willing to bet, once I cut the harness open, I bet you anything that orange wire is broken in two. Look, there's dirt falling out of it. So, yeah, I bet you anything it was rubbing through on the other transfer case. Sorry, it was rubbing through on the other transfer case and it got water and everything else in there. Look at that, all that dirt just falling out of that. And it's basically corroded and broken. So let me get this opened up and I'll show you what I got. Look at that mess. And sure enough, you look inside there's the orange wire that's that's the power wire and it's look at that it's rotted out because it got nicked and corroded so it's broken right there so it looks like there's another wire there too I gotta fix so let me get this completely open let me fix the harness and there we go I cut out the 
broken ends, the little corroded pieces at the end. There's only two wires, luckily. That little brownish colored and that orange wire. So there's my unshielded butt connectors. And now I'm going to just put the heat shrink on it. This is that uh, heat shrink with the glue in it. So now I'm just going to heat shrink those in place. And we are going to plug it back in and see how we make out. There we go. That's all together now. So now, when I go to test this, I should have battery voltage on that orange wire. Yep. See yeah. that? So now I know I got battery voltage there. So now let's plug this in. I'm going to put this thing back down on the ground, make sure everything works. And I'm going to come underneath here and I'm going to straighten all of this out, make it all nice and pretty, and make sure the harness isn't going to touch the dry shaft or anything like that. All right, let's get that done. Back down on the ground, as you can see, here's the fuse box, and this fuse here was the one that was feeding that. And it comes down through the harness and in through this connector, and it's the orange wire here. And I had power in and out of this connector, and it was going down underneath, so you know what? I knew I had an issue there somewhere. So let's go inside now and see what happens. this off and that should all be because I had it disconnected let's see let's clear codes hopefully everything works we're about to find out okay no codes that's a big plus because it was coming right up before lighting up on there. Oh, it's more than it was doing before. Yep. Okay, it works now. All right, perfect. That's all I care about. So, originally, when... Uh, I never thought this thing was going to need a transfer case, but it needed a transfer case because it had holes in it. Um, you know, I kind of figured it was either an encoder motor issue or a wiring issue initially, but... You know, when I actually realized that I could not manually get the transfer case out of auto four-wheel drive, I was like, something's definitely going on here. Something's broken or whatever. And obviously, it's been broken. And somebody tried to patch it up. Luckily, I had another transfer case. So, that's it. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, if you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.